Niantic released a new version of their Spatial SDK, which now includes the beta support for the Meta Quest 3 devices. Since we can access the camera feed of the Quest 3 using the pass-through API, Niantic is essentially using this to make some of the already existing features of their SDK like VPS schematics, object detection, live meshing and others available on the Quest 3 device. Now before making this video, I tested out the sample scenes and I can tell you there's a huge potential of what we can build using this SDK. In this video, I'll show you how to set up your Unity project and download the Niantic Spatial SDK and I'll also show you how you can access the sample scenes and build it onto your headset. Now if you're lazy to follow along or if you don't want to start from scratch, you can download the entire project that has been set up from the link given in the description below. Alright then, let's get started. So first you need to make sure that you have the right Unity editor installed. Niantic's SDK is supported on Unity 6 and Unity 2022 LTS. If you're using Unity 6, then make sure that you have the version 0.53 F1 and above. And if you're using Unity 2022, make sure you have the version 3.62 F1 or above. Now, if you don't have the required version of the Unity editor, you can open your Unity Hub, navigate inside the Installs tab, click on Install Editor. And from this list, you can either install the latest version of Unity 6, which is 0.55 F1 LTS, or you can install the latest version of Unity 2022, which is 3.62 F1 LTS. Now while installing, make sure to select Android build support with Open SDK and NDK tools. And also make sure that you have the dev tool, which is Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2022. Once you have the required version of the Unity editor installed, you can navigate inside projects, create a new project. From the editor version dropdown, make sure that you have selected the right version. And from the templates, you can either choose universal 3D core render pipeline, or you can download and use the 3D built-in render pipeline. The choice is yours. Now for this video, I'll be using the universal 3D core render pipeline. And that's because this requires some additional steps for the pass-through to work, which I'd like to show you. Then you can give your project a name and create the project. First, we need to set up a Unity project for XR development for the Meta Quest 3 devices and that involves adding two packages, Meta XR Core SDK and OpenXR plugin. So first, navigate inside File, Build Profiles, select Android as the platform and switch the platform. Next, make sure you're on the Android tab and from the plugin providers, select OpenXR. Now this will automatically install the OpenXR plugin packages. Next, to import the MetaXR Core SDK, you need to visit the Asset Store and search for MetaXR Core SDK and add this to your assets. Then you can click on Open in Unity and open it inside the Unity Editor. Now this will show you the package inside the Package Manager. All you need to do now is click on Install. During the installation, you might get a pop-up asking you to enable the MetaXR feature set click on yes. And then you'll get a prompt to restart the editor. So click on that. Once the project reopens, we can use the project setup tool to configure our project for Android. For that, navigate inside the Meta XR tool and click on project setup tool. Here, make sure that you're on the Android tab and it will show you a list of outstanding issues and recommended items. You can just click on fix all and then apply all of them. And just like that, we have set up our Unity project for XR development for the Meta Quest 3 devices. Now, we can go ahead and install the Niantix packages. For that, navigate inside Windows Package Manager. Click on this plus symbol and select add package from git URL and paste this URL which you'll find in the description below. Then click on install. This will add the Niantic Lightship AR plugin package to your project. Next, to install the Lightship Quest packages, you'll have to click on the plus symbol, select install package from git URL and paste this URL which once again you'll find in the description below and click on install. Once that's done, you'll see that the Niantic Lightship Meta plugin package has been added to your project. Next, we'll have to add an API key. For that, navigate inside Lightship settings and click on get API key. This will open the lightship.dev website on your web browser. Here, you can create a new account if you don't have one already. If not, feel free to log in. Here, you can create a new project, give your project a name and copy the API key. Then go back to your Unity project and paste it over here. Then you can scroll down and inside location and compass, we need to change the data source from sensors to spoof. Next, we need to activate some of the XR loaders. For that, navigate inside XR plugin management and under the open XR plugin, select MetaQuest feature group and also Niantic Lightship support for MetaQuest feature group. Then 
navigate inside the Lightship menu and run the setup for Meta. Once that's done, you can navigate inside OpenXR and under the OpenXR feature groups, make sure that the Lightship Meta AR camera pass through has been checked and the Meta Quest camera pass through has been unchecked. And then we can go inside project validation tool once again and fix all the issues that it's showing. Now there is one error that we'll have to fix manually. That is to set the active input handling to the latest input system. For that, navigate inside player settings, scroll down till you find the active input handling. And from this drop down, make sure to select input system package new and click on apply with that. We have our project set up with the latest version of Niantic's Lightship SDK and we are now ready to download the samples and test it on our headset. Now before we download the samples, we need to install the XI Interaction Toolkit as it's a dependency. So navigate inside Windows, Package Manager, select Unity Registry and scroll all the way down till you find XI Interaction Toolkit and install the package. Then select the packages that are added in your project Select Niantic Lightship Meta plugin, click on samples and import the samples. Then you can close this window and navigate inside asset, samples, Niantic Lightship Meta plugin and then the version number. Inside that we have a folder called samples and in here we have a bunch of scenes that you can test out. Now the right way to configure this is to go inside file, build profiles, select scene list, then select the scene that's currently there and delete it. Then navigate inside home scenes, select the home scene and add it as the first scene. So make sure that the home scene is at zero and then you can go ahead and add rest of the sample scenes below this. All right, so I've added all the sample scenes which includes the camera display, depth image, occlusion, cloud device mapping, device mapping, meshing, object detection, semantic image, semantic speaker, and VPS localization that makes a total of 11 scenes. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, this is just a beta release, which means that there are some bugs and we'll have to fix it. So for that, navigate inside asset sample Niantic Lightship plugin, the version samples, select device mapping scenes and open the device mapping scene. Here, select the XR rig scroll down and we need to change the default anchor game object from what is being assigned here to anchor transform which you can find by scrolling all the way up and here you'll be able to see it if you're not able to see it then make sure to toggle this icon and then you should be able to see it so select the prefab and attach it over here then select the device mapping game object and open the on device persistent script now in this script scroll all the way down till you find a function called create and place cube. And in here, we need to add a line of code, which is to get the mesh tenderer component of the game object that we have created and add a new material, which is of type lit under the universal render pipeline. And then you can save the script and exit Visual Studio and make sure to save the scene. Save that. Now there are a couple more settings we'll have to configure just because we are using the universal render pipeline. If you're using the 3D core render pipeline, then feel free to skip these steps. First, navigate inside edit, select project settings. In here, select graphics and select the default render pipeline, which is PC underscore RP asset. Now, when you click on this, it's going to highlight inside the project window over here. So you can select it. And here under the render list, you'll be able to find the renderer that's being used. And if you click on it, it's going to highlight over here, which is nothing but the PC renderer. So you can select that. Scroll all the way down and add a render feature called as AR background render feature. Now, if you do not add this render feature and try to build and run this application on your headset, you will be able to see a black screen. Then we need to disable post processing. Go back to the PCRP asset and here disable the terrain holes and disable HDR. Now you can close this window, navigate inside file build profiles, select player settings, change the company name, give your product a name and scroll down and make sure to uncheck override default package name and check it once again to make sure that the package name matches the name that you have given over here. Then you can close this window, make sure to connect your Quest 3 using the link cable, click on build and run, create a new folder called as builds, give your application a name and click on save. Now while this is getting built, if you get a pop-up asking you to update the Android version, then make sure to update it. All right, the app has been successfully built onto my headset. 
when the application runs for the first time, it's going to give you pop up asking you to grant permission to access different data like spatial data. Make sure to grant permission for all of them. Once that's done, you should be able to see this UI with three different tabs, the overview tab, the setting tab and the scenes tab. Select the scenes tab and from here, you can see all the scenes that we have built. The camera display scene will display the camera feed on top of a canvas using the pass-through camera API. The object detection scene will give you a live demo of object detection in real time. As you can see here, it's detecting my laptop, it's detecting chair, and the number that you see below is the probability. Now from the settings tab, you can change the target frame rate so that more images are processed and more consistent will be the UI. And you can change the probability threshold also. Now from the filter, you can filter for a particular object. So if I select furniture, only the furnitures will be detected. And then when I switch it back to all, all the other objects that are listed also will be detected. Next, the depth image scene will give you an idea of how far or how close an object is to the camera and based on its distance, it will have a different color tone. Next, the occlusion scene demonstrates the SDK's feature where it adds an occlusion mesh on top of the scene. So as you can see here, the ray is passing through the pot and coming out of the other side, which makes it look realistic. Now from the settings tab, we can also toggle to show depth. And as you can see here, it will show you depth in a different color. Next, the schematic image scene will show you different schematics based on the target channel. By default, it is artificial ground. So if you look at the ground, it's going to show you in a different color channel. And then from the settings tab, you can filter for different channels. For example, let's say ground. And then if you go back to the overview tab, you'll be able to see the ground. Similarly, you can test it out for other things as well like natural ground, water, or a person. Next, we have the schematics picker. Now in this scene, it will allow you to take your controller and point it at an object, and it will show you what kind of schematic it is. Now in this example, you can see that it is showing artificial ground or TV experimental based on what your controller is pointing towards. The meshing scene will generate real-time mesh based on the data gathered from the Quest depth camera. The VPS localization scene has certain sample areas mapped in the San Francisco area. So if you go inside settings tab, you'll be able to see these locations. Now, obviously I'm not in San Francisco right now, so I cannot localize it. But if you're there, feel free to go to those areas and start to localize and test it out. The cloud device mapping will not work and that's because it requires a Lightship shared AI package. Now you can install that and try it out. It's meant for shared local multiplayer experiences. And finally, we have the device mapping. Now here you can go inside the settings tab and you can create a map and click on scan. Now you have to just look around and wait for the map to be created. Now once the map is done creating, it will create an anchor point here as you can see. And then you can place cubes with respect to those anchors. So now the cubes are getting placed at a distance of two meters from the camera. And then you can exit. And then when you click on load map, it's going to scan the map and it's going to create uh, persistent anchors as you could see. Now I'm going to delete them and place some more cubes. Exit and let's load the map again. And you can see that they're exactly in the same position. All right then, I hope this worked for you as well and you're able to test out the sample scenes on your headset. If you want us to make dedicated videos showing you how to set up the scenes for each of these features, then let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.